If I see this bloke pick Hayes Pyramid Center, I'm gonna fucking lose my mind. Why are you taking hit ups? Move him. You're the you're the guy. Like you're the guy, brother. They're uh, on our fraud list. Penrith could be a fraud team of the week. Like you didn't, literally didn't score. I'm I'm watching the guy hold his shoulder like. If week, there bro. were four more games, he would have got them all wrong anyway. <laughs> oh, Maron, what are you doing? Hey, like, comment, subscribe, share, do everything you gotta do, man. It goes a long way. Trust me. You like my shirt? Get yeah, straight into the episode. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to League Lads. How you going? Uh, rah, rah, rah. <laughs> yeah. Oi, I'm so tired. I don't know why. Um, what's going on, boys? How are you, bro? How you going, Fred? I'm all right. Yeah, you all right? Good? Yeah, I'm not good, mate. Zero from 12 for the tips this week. Yeah, this guy sucked. <laughs> there wasn't oh. even 12 games, but I'm just going to say zero to 12. That's how bad I was this if week, If there bro. were four more games, he would have got them all wrong anyway. Exactly, <laughs> bro. We've got Flex in the building. You can't really see him. My camera issues. But he's in the, he's in the building. He's got his Penrith jersey on. And um, he's joining us today because he's going to speak about how awful, how disgusting, how shocking his team was. Uh, not the worst. <laughs> we're, we're, we're looking at two Bulldogs fans right now. Oh, like, come on, come on. He's getting us a little bit spicy now, this Flexi, man. I'd rather lose to Para than lose to Melbourne without Munster, bro. Uh, anyway, listen, listen. We're going to get into all that. First of all, we're sponsored by Reese, the absolute legends, the goats. If you don't know, now you know. Whatever you need to rent, whatever you need to lease, you go on the app and you do it. And you do it perfectly because they got everything, right? You know, they probably they probably had a few points for Penrith as well if they wanted to lease some. Um, against Melbourne in that game. Ooh, that one hurts, doesn't you it? Could have, you could have least <laughs> Critter again if you needed him, but... <laughs> that one hurt a bit, eh, Flexi? <laughs> it's all love, it's all love. Anyway, listen, let's get started. Um, honestly, I usually say, what a round of footy, but it was a shit round of footy. Straight out, in my opinion. You, everyone can have their opinion, but I don't think that rugby league round was as good as I thought it would be. But it is the first round, technically, and um, there is going to be some slow games and there is going to be some, you know, weird, weird tries and teams that can't score and buckling. But let's speak about the first game, the Canberra Raiders. Up the milk. That was a mad, that was a mad performance from them. Shout out Kota Jabara, my, one of my good mates. He's a hardcore Canberra fan. And every time like, I doubt him, he just throws milk at me. Well, that's, that's Remember we did the milk, we went to do the milk challenge last year and they almost got us. Yeah, nearly very close. <laughs> oh, that was close. But um, yeah, um, that's their first 13 plus win in I think two years. Crazy. Which bro. is a crazy stat. Um, they're like, they're less love an arm wrestle. Eh? And I, as soon as I saw the game getting into an arm wrestle, I was like, I think Canberra can probably pinch one here. And I'm like, you know, Knights either, I just expected them to start a bit quicker. Um, but like just like last year it looks like they're starting pretty slow um and you if you're starting slow they could not hold the ball at all and the raiders were just capitalizing on it every chance they got and um fogarty had an absolute blinder even with the simbin man they they start when they scored with the simbin i was like yeah this is a canberra w i stuffed up i'm gonna start off my round with <laughs> with a wrong tip bro but then they just have this grit in them uh, ricky stewart i think he loves being the underdog he loves being the one that people just love to talk about Oh, Ricky Stewart's team, they lost wide and they're falling off, yada, yada. It is their first game, so this could still be true. Yeah. But they love the arm wrestle, like you said, and they, they came out on top, man. Shout out to Dan as well, was in Vegas, upset about that loss. Yeah, that's probably, why they lo that's probably why they lost, mate. He they could have used there. him on the field, mate, good old Dan, to right. be fair. Good old fucking run but, up um, and up meters. Oh, I saw this thing where it was like, there was like a sign in the Raiders dressing room that was like, I can't remember exactly what it said, but basically alluding to the fact that they'll be bottom four. And they're obviously using that as motivation. Like, you know, Ted Lasso, like, we believe or believe that <laughs> yeah. that's fine. It's like, just like that. Like, they, I think they're going to, if they have that around all the time, I think it's just a reminder of what every, where everybody placed them. Um, that will give them a good G up. Anything, anyone from that game that you want to give credit to other than, of course, Fogarty? Um, from both I, teams, man. Rapana, anyone bro, I don't know how this bloke is still doing it. Like, that guy, like, he needs... He's at the age where he's going to need WD-40 every week. <laughs> Everything's going to be strapped, but he's still such a damn hard worker. He might be a bit of a hog, but, mate, he worked so hard for him. And um, Morgan Smithies, I think that's his name, the guy from England, um, had a really, really good game. And, like, you got to be happy with that. It looks like Ricky's done it again, like, pinching some English like, players that random don't, that don't English get player that we don't know. That don't get homesick. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> they all get homesick. Well, for they? their sake, you know, because we had to deal with it with Luke Thompson and they obviously had to deal with it with Bateman but I guess yeah. it was just money sick or he just didn't like Canberra I think that's what to get out of there sometimes sometimes Canberra gets probably cold and, and, yeah, but, and boring yeah but where are they from <laughs> yeah literally England <laughs> cold literally and boring the same thing, I hey. think in their mind they have like this picture of like nice sun and good beaches 
And then they don't, they don't know about Canberra. You reckon Ricky Stewart has some tactic where he's like, yeah, come down, man. We've got the beaches. We've got the sun. Yeah, he's, definitely, he's definitely using we'll that one. We'll supply the sunscreen, everything you need, the carrot sun. And then they rock up and they're like, oh, what the fuck's this, man? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> they're like tripping out. You want some chicken, lad? <laughs> you, want some, <laughs> you want some chicken, lad? But yeah, no. Nah, it's um, yeah, doom and gloom there. But Morgan Smith has had a great game too. Yeah, all, all credit to Canberra Raiders. I won't doubt you again, I promise you. Shout out to Mark Raider and Kata Jabara. I heard so much from them. They put it on me. Um, and rightly so, I was wrong. Um, let's get straight to the Penrith game. All right, this is why we got flexing them on the mics today. Um, I wish you could see his beautiful face. But his team... So, so you know what? Give us a little bit of a background because you are a hardcore Penrith fan. Right, we're not going to say who you supported before. Okay. Yeah, you're under the reds here. We're not going to say it. So we'll let the, we'll let the, we'll let the, uh, the crowd commentate on that one. This but is why I'm not on camera. <laughs> they got you hidden. All right, so tell us, because you travel, of course, you, you go to these games hardcore. You're a member for, of Penrith Panthers. Um, just run us through how that is, bro. Well, run through the game or run through... Both. You did travel to Melbourne. So, yeah, um, got up around 8 a.m., you know, got on the train, went to the uh, airport, flew over... Actually, stream the uh, New yeah, you Zealand weren't streaming game. hard out. What were you streaming? I was um, so there's this place called Fortress, it's fucking it's mad, sick. Bro. it's a gaming bar, it's absolutely insane. And uh, um, what the hell, that's mad, yeah, yeah. It's at the UTS campus here in Avon in Melbourne. And you can too. like stream, you can they have a streaming pod, but they got like an internet cafe and they have like a restaurant and bar where you like order food and drinks and then you have like a Nintendo Switch or PlayStation Sponsor us bro we're giving you look at us I know what a plug it's mad bro Sponsor him bro Sponsor Flexi bro Absolutely amazing then So went there um, got to the game and the atmosphere bro if you've ever been to Amy Park atmosphere is fucking incredible man Yeah Like they they bring it and they had um sneaky sound system or they they had them singing Good old vintage boys huh Like Bro, it was it was insane. Uh, for the game, Panthers attack wasn't was non-existent. So Just we never seen Penrith actually. Let, let's talk about it. Penrith scoreless insanity, right? The talk before the game was how much are Penrith gonna beat Melbourne by, right? By Mister Fred himself and by me as well. I said thirteen plus. How much are Penrith gonna smash Melbourne? They're weak. Yada yada yada. But shout out to Rando Stats guy, bro. Rando, random stats guy. He said. He, he gave us the stat. Melbourne have never lost a game in I don't know how many long the opening game, this, that. That would be 22 years now. 22 years. And you know, like, it's not just Bellamy. It's just a Melbourne genetic. They don't lose the opening round. And we're like, it's about to be broken. But as usual, numbers don't lie, brother. Stats don't lie. And the, the biggest stat of all is Penrith didn't score a try, a point. Well, the last time it happened was 2022 against Melbourne Storm. Same, uh, I don't know what week it was, but we versed them in the same week. Parramatta also lost to zero. Wow. So, yeah, but the last time it happened, it was also against Melbourne. Yeah, because we didn't watch the game. We we actually, we were at Theo Von. Shout out to Theo Von. Uh, unbelievable. Unbelievable experience for us, really. And a bit off topic, but it was just too funny. We were in tears. It was so time. funny, bro. And we're actually, like, the most saddest thing about that was Fred telling me, Fred every 10 minutes, like, bro, Melbourne's up by two. Melbourne's up by eight. Penrith can't score. What's going on? Oh, they're going to win. <laughs> the Warriors game too. I'm the like, Warriors game the is fuck? all. We've the Warriors game is all. But yeah, we didn't get to watch the game. So, But what we've seen, we heard that uh, Penrith are very rusty, um, very clunky. And the biggest thing we need to all talk about and give them their flair was they played without Munster and they still managed to win and they defended their life away, bro. Like people were talking, like I didn't watch the game, but of people's comments, people were like, Bet one of the best games we've watched defensively for Melbourne Storm. Uh, best best defensive game I think I've watched in a long time. Pa- Panthers and Melbourne, both teams had defense on lockdown. Um, it was just the sloppy, non-existent attack from Penrith that gave Melbourne an advantage. Their attack was also really good. Like um, Pappenhausen coming back in. Um, uh, How did he look? He looked good? He looked so good, man. He's quick, he, yeah? He was confident, you know. Um, you, when you... When you watch a player, you know if they have their confidence or not. After this injury, he's. Uh, I actually had an interview. Yeah, with him. I was about to say, shout out to, to Big Pappenhausen, bro. Um, yeah. Gave you the interview. Imagine. Yeah, he, he said he'd uh, been in uh, preseason training since January, and he's he's just built so much confidence. He looked like a star out there. Yeah, what happened to him was awful last year, bro. Especially coming back from that injury, going from that to that. It's good to see him because, bro, we need him. We actually need him for New South Wales, bro. And I know people are going to say Tedesco, this, that, but if you can have Pappenhausen on your bench... Bro, remember when Pappenhausen first broke out? We were like, fire, he'll be handy on the bench. A eh? little zippy bloke comes on when tired legs. One, two, three. 
I think like he's back now and he's probably going to be in contention if he stays fit and stays um, in form. Yeah, he's like what Queensland fans would have thought when they saw Reese Walsh, you know, like very, like they have very similar. X Factor. Yeah, X Factor, Zippy, like you can't grab him. Like you just, they're just so like, they're little, but they're so hard to tackle because they're just so damn elusive and quick and agile. It's great to see him with his confidence back. Like, um, you know, it's like you could only just feel bad for him about what happened between him the last couple of years, but it's good to see him playing football again and hopefully he can just, you know, stay injury free. Any 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 positives for Penrith? I know it was a tough, tough loss, but any positives? Um, Taylor May, I heard was Taylor like, May was our best player. Absolute weapon. I think Everyone's gonna say, "Oh, you know, we're really lost for cri- uh, we're losing critter. critter." I don't. It that, is a lot. It's a huge, huge. It's loss. a huge loss. Don't but, get me wrong. But this but is what's I'd, so good about Penrith is they birth another one. Exactly. That's the most important thing. And I don't think him being in that game changed it. Everyone's like, "Oh, he's a clutch player." You know, in the clutch, he would have saved us. I don't. I don't think so. Um, but one takeaway from Penrith is our defense. I still think we're the, one of the top defensive teams oh, in the in the comp. Most definitely, so, you just, can't ever take that. You, they can't. You don't lose that defense overnight. No, let's be real. Yeah, but that's where that's <laughs> where um look when I'm a bit worried. Like, I, th- I think it was because I didn't. Wa- I only watched the mini, but like Tango after he came back from his injury last year, defensively looked really suspect. That's why mm. I had Broncos winning it because I thought they were gonna absolutely like just spam his side. Didn't they? And they did. Didn't they did they, 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 like, I'm like, Ezra I'm Man, literally watching the game being like, far, I'm, I was, this is a masterstroke for me. Like, I can't, <laughs> I'm thinking like, I can't wait. Like, I'm literally talking as if Brisbane had won the game, bro. Like, I told you, I'm on TikTok basically saying, I told you so. Doubly hectic Fred. And then Nathan Cleary happened, you know what I mean? Which is, I'm so glad it happened because I got to, we all got to witness one of the best performances ever from a play in a grand final. But I think next to Cleary was Crichton in terms of, how good he played in that grand final. And he was massive in leading the charge back. And I think that's where you're going to miss him. In these tight games, and especially in finals time, like these are the moments where Crichton will step up and separate himself from other centers in the comp, you know. And I think as good as Taylor May is, you know, I got him in fantasy. He's off contract this year, isn't he? I think he is. I'm not sure. I think so. It's either this year or next year. Because his brother is like... They're all trying to get together. Yeah, I think his brother hasn't re signed with the Roosters yet because he's waiting to see where his brother goes. I'd love him at the Bulldogs, bro. Oh, mate, he's but the I one that I want. I don't want the third brother, straight up. He, yeah, <laughs> but Terrell and Taylor, I'd take them all day. But, um, yeah, I think as good as Taylor is, it's those big moments where Crichton will separate himself from everybody else. But he might, Taylor might get there, bro. Yeah, he might get there. We, spoke to, we said that about Crichton as well. I don't know if he used to rate Crichton as highly as everyone else did. I used to be like, all right, he scores tries and that, but like, there's things in his game where, you know, like. Uh, and then, like, the last year, I was like, oh, wow. This guy's actually, like, clutch. And he done it in the Rabbitohs grand final. He done it in the grand final against Brisbane. And, you know, like, just big, big game player. I'm actually happy to have, have him at the Bulldogs. Um, on that topic of the Bulldogs. Can we talk about the Warriors? All right, let's talk about the Warriors, yeah. yeah. I, didn't, I didn't watch the game, so I didn't really want to. Yeah, I, I, watched, I watched the first half an hour, and then I watched the rest of it. Metcalf, um, I see Metcalf's um, try. Yeah. I, Phenomenal, bro. What a player. Celebrating like that against his old team is a bit sus. Like, it's <laughs> only in NRL they do that, I swear. <laughs> or the NBA. Like in other, like football, for example, they're not doing that, bro. You yeah. get booed for life if you celebrate like this. But um, like I was saying to everyone last year, it was a massive signing for them. And I think he was way better than um, to- uh, Tamari Martin. Is that his? I think yeah. Tamari Martin. Uh, and, uh, way better than Chanel Harris Tavita. Like a lot of Warriors supporters were putting Chanel in the starting team, and I just didn't see it. I'm like, why would you? Why would you drop Luke? Like Luke is by far your best six. Um, I expected more from Johnson and Hines. Like they both were not that good, and I was very shocked because we. Le- I left. It was 12 nil, bro. Warriors were trotting. The crowd was getting into it. RTS was playing insane, and then. Uh, I just don't like. I don't know. Come back revenge game, bro. Yeah, like back to this was what the sharks wouldn't do: work themselves back into a game. Like huge signs, and that's really good signs from the sharks. And I got to give them their credit. Like, um, I think they really showed a lot of heart and toughness to work themselves back into the game. Hostile territory, round one. They know the reputation around them. Definitely. But that forward pack, their backs are just really tough nosed players, and this is like. Hines didn't have the best game. Somehow this guy got six fantasy points, uh, six Dalian points. I have no clue. 
He should not have got one at all. But this week? This week, Hines got six. He was one of the Sharks. Oh, I didn't watch it, but like... He was one of the Sharks' worst players, in my opinion. And what did he get him for? The try assist? I don't know what he got him for. <laughs> I don't know what he got him for. I that think, whole, he, got, I think system, he got one assist. The whole system needs, a, it, it needs an needs update. A, needs so a blow up everybody is saying Hines did not deserve six. After what I saw, I don't think he deserves a point, let alone six, for God's sake. But um, he didn't do much and they won, which is not what you'd expect. Like, I think... Like, um, you got to be happy if you're a Sharks fan. The Warriors fans, like, I think you just got to... It is round one. Round too. one, bro. It's round you one. You can't bro. look into it too much, but this is something that the Sharks didn't do until the back end of last year. A good, a big game against a top team, hostile territory. Work fall to asleep. Have a good performance. Oh, you know what yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah, yeah. They didn't do this. They used to fall asleep. They yeah. used to just always choke whenever they, you know, like, whenever they versed a good team. But in my opinion, they versed one of the best teams in the NRL and... <laughs> Ended up getting the win in the hostile term. Yeah, I think for the Sharks that's a good sign for them. I mean, we always said this: they don't have that, they don't have that extra bit of balls on them. Like they don't have that, like that oh, dog in them, bro. That dog in them. Yeah, I, that's another way of saying it. But they don't have that thing in them where they're like, all right, yeah, we're in a it's a tough situation right now. Boom! This is what the greats do, bro. Nathan Cleary, cried and luck in the grand finals. That's what these players do, bro. So if they add that to their team, that gives Fitzgibbon a big boost because he's able to bring that into them. And also if Hines. I think this is a big year for Hines, bro. It's it's make or break for the overrated section yeah. for him. Honestly, and I love Hines, and I think he's a great player, but I think, like, last year, confidence got damaged from origin, of course, playing him as a, a camera ball, center Senna. hooker, whatever it was. Um, but, yeah, he, he, this is a big year for him, bro. He's got to really show everyone that he's not just, you know, a one-dimensional player. He can do other things, and I think it will be very, very good for him. Yeah, and he's just one, another note. They've got a really good forward pack for the next few years because they've literally re-signed Fino, everyone and Fino, um, they re-signed Fino, uh, they they signed Fino Fino Blake. Blake they re-signed um, Hamlin Uele Royce Hunt shout out to Hamlin Jack Williams well. like they're retaining everyone yeah, so it's, it's going to be a massive year for them this year and next year the next few I reckon let's see how they go let's get into the main topic of the whole show right the main reason why we even do league lads so we can vent about these Bulldogs Bulldogs para, I don't even know the full time score. I don't really really care to be honest with 26 you. Twenty six to eight. The game does not the score does not reflect the game. Now, shout out to the Bulldogs players because in the first half defended absolutely phenomenally. Right? The def- defense was 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 massive and Fred will get into it a bit more than I would. Last season would have been a completely different story, right? Um, also another thing, it is round one. So it is very difficult to to really see where the team is gonna go off one game. And I always said, like, I need to see at least five games where the players are playing actually in routine and building combinations in chemistry. Then I can give them my proper judgment. But there are things about that game that really pissed me off. Like, really, really pissed me off. Um, what do you think about the game? And then we'll get into that. Uh, first things first, if last team's, play, if last team's team played La- this... Last season? Yeah, if last season's team played this year, it would have been 60 plus to nothing. I agree. For sure. Like, this... I w- I'm not looking... I'm looking at round one. I'm looking to see what they improved on, right? I'm not looking for a win or a loss. I, look, I know it's against Parramatta, but that's the one game I really want to win all year, them or the Roosters, but... They're miles ahead At of the end of the day, like, I think Parramatta were really good and they were struggling to break through our line. Like, they... they you got... Everyone might say, you know, it was 14-0 at halftime, like they scored twice, but the amount of opportunities they had... It should have been 30, 40 plus at half time. Yeah, that's, 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 that's what it's it saying. It literally would have been 40 plus at half time, like it was against the Knights last year. This was like that exact sort of game, but worse because the Knights scored 36 on us or 38 on us and a half, scoring from the 40 and 50. That was just breaking just us running down. running away, like that. yeah. Bro, Parramatta were literally camped at down our end the whole first half, the whole first hour. And they were very resilient. I know they cracked a couple of times, but. Like, if you have bloody 15 sets on their line, it's bound to happen, bro. Yeah, you and you get, I mean? you get frustrated as well. As, and, a, as an attacking team, you get frustrated. Yeah, and it was just sad. Like, these guys would defend four sets really well. We finally get the ball back. First tackle, drop ball. Second tackle, drop ball. They grubber it. We bobble it, drop the ball. Like, we could not catch break. Couldn't get a bounce of the ball. I think our discipline... I think our discipline... Wait, well. we, got, we got some birds hanging out of us. It's all right, boys. We're getting rid of this problem very soon. Yeah. I can't wait. <laughs> Um, I think our discipline is is still a bit off, man. Oh, and really listen, bad. I didn't I didn't watch I didn't watch like I watched the game, but like a lot of people were telling me like the ref just didn't give us a break. No, uh, which yeah, but I'm gonna tell you what I think. I don't think that's true. I think like I don't want to even blame the refs because we were just fatigued as fuck. 
And that's had that happens, but we were also ill disciplined. There were times where like I seen kick out just shoot off the line. Like for me, like I, I don't want to see that. I just want to see like proper structured defense on kick chases. I want to see the the team actually beat together, and they were, they were, right. In attack, it's a bit difficult to see any sort of difference. A big reason is Drew Hutchinson. Now, Drew Hutchinson for me isn't a halfback. Uh, even at the Roosters, bro, they were they were they didn't ever want to play him as a halfback. They were playing in the centers, utility. He did the halfback, but like it wasn't like a first choice thing. So, I, I think it's I don't have anything against him. I just think he's he's very clunky when he's playing. It doesn't seem to move and left and move right and just be flexible like I would see with Sexton. And I'm not saying Sexton is this world class halfback and oh my god, if we had him, we win the game. No. But I want to see Sexton and Burton build on that combination with Crichton in the team. With Kikau now fit playing. With Preston, you know, on the right side. I want to see that, bro. Yeah, I'm not judging them at all. The This loss was not on them. Yeah, definitely. Um, they had zero opportunity to succeed at all. The Ford Pack did not lay a platform for them at all. Zero. We were stuck inside our own half until the 60-minute 60, 60 mark. Literally, as soon as we got two proper sets on their line, we scored. I mean, we scored two tries. It's like the first time we were down there properly. There were other times where we we're looking to set something up. Uh, they were there a couple of times in the first half and we dropped the ball. We'd get a penalty, kick our loser off the tap. You know what I mean? Like really silly errors that are not, they won't happen consistently. Like it really was an anomaly. The amount of, the amount that we had to defend, the amount that we had to defend our line. You know, he's, there's 70% possession in the half, insanity, which is what they had. That's insanity as but, well. <coughs> like seventy percent of that seventy percent felt like it was down at our on our ten and twenty meter line, like the boys. It was like fifty to eight, like or fifty five to eight, like tackled an opposition twenty stats for Parramatta, and they held their own really well. The fact that we brought it to a one to twelve game was a shock, bro. And yeah. then and then the salmon pass happened, which is just one of the worst passes I've ever From seen. Blake and Wilson is that the Blake is that the, the one to Blake Wilson? Yeah, and you can't blame Blake Wilson for receiving the worst pass ever. Um, now a lot of people are pointing fingers at him and Blake Taff specifically. Blake Taff and Jameis Hammond both made errors on both sides of the park. Um, uh, a lot of people were pointing fingers at Blake Wilson because he dropped the ball four times. We just had an, an uncharacteristic amount of errors, and it was just really tough to watch. I think yeah, it was. Take, I felt take, bad, yeah. but I'm literally watching it, thinking, "Oh, they're gonna break now. Oh, they're gonna break this set." And they, would, and, and they would stay strong, bro. And that's why I'm looking at that. I'm looking at the way they defended their line speed throughout the whole game. Their attitude towards defending their line for literally half an hour or 40 minutes of that game. Like, it was good. The first contact was good. The boys were G'd up. I don't know if it was just round one or Penrith. But uh, the fact of reversing Parramatta. But I was happy with what I saw defensively. Now in attack, I cannot judge him. Burden did not have a good game with the boot until... The last 20 minutes, I started to like it, but... I feel like, Matt, to, I feel like Burden, we have to have a conversation about Burden. I, I don't want to. And I'm not going to do <coughs> and it. And I love you. You, you can't do you. anything. No, If we could have had Nathan Cleary and the results sort of would have, still would have been the same because Nathan has to be put in a position next to succeed, uh, succeed just like every other halfback. Listen, when I, your forwards don't go forward, you as a half I agree, I agree. cannot do anything. Let, let me stop you there. I, I want to say more like accountability for, as, as the... Bro, for me... Matt Burden is one of the most talented players on our team. Fact. Throw, do whatever you want. You, we all know that. If you're going to pick one player that another sport will grab off his talent, it's Matt Burden, Stephen Crichton, right? Players like that. They're, they're, they're important. Now, uh, in attack, uh, uh, throw the ball around, right? There was the last five minutes when we got ourselves a little bit back into the game, right? There, there was, I think, the centers were just taking hit-ups. The wingers were taking hit-ups. Why are you taking hit-ups? Move him. You're the, you're the guy. Like, you're the guy, brother. You're the guy that... If we're going to score anything, it's going to be off you setting it up. Go there, get it. Like, I just, for me, like, I want to see it more involved. I don't want to see shying away from the from from the big moment. Like, even if you stuff up, even if you make an error, even if you throw it out on the kick out, whatever it is, at least I'm like, all right, now I'm watching this guy and I know that he's going for it. You know what I mean? That's f the only thing for me. But I agree with you. When you don't have a seven next to you, when you don't have forwards that lay the platform for you, very, very hard to get into the game. Well, in the first half, he's trying to set shit up. And this is another talking point. He's on the left-hand side. Very strong left-hand side. 
But I, was, I, I, I didn't but, see I didn't but, see one ball go to Arakatu. He was injured. What do you mean? He was injured from the beginning of the game, bro. From, what? from seven minutes in, he was injured. I watched. I was on that side. I watched the hit up. He ran in right with his shoulder, like turned his shoulder into the defender, and he was fucked. He couldn't carry his lift. His, his he yeah, couldn't yeah, lift okay. his arm. Let's talk about that. So then that's ruined everything. They, he, they, the second time we got the ball, the second set we had, he got injured. So everything from that point that he tried to do on that left hand side, in especially in the first half when he's on third or fourth tackle. He's trying to shift it. He's shifting it to a guy with one arm. And this well, is which burns about, me even more. Why was he still on the field? Yeah, I don't know. So, I, so let's talk. I think Geraldo, he sees Adokar. This is a leader on the team, right? And I can't knock Adokar's heart. Bro, I but I think Geraldo left it to Adokar to see what he wanted him to do. Okay? I don't think he was... It's first game of the year. The guy got injured five minutes in. He doesn't want to throw the towel in, bro. I get it. Like... And I think he left it up to Adokar until they got into the sheds and could properly assess it. And then that's when they pulled the plug. Ah, right, bro, listen. But I would have hooked him. The guy was clearly fucked. Listen, listen. I don't want to swear, out, but he was to, fucked. Shout out to Josh Adokar. Um, speed recovery. I, I, I think it's not as major. Two to as, four weeks. Yes, yeah, so it's not as major as it. It is still a big blow for us, bro. He's one of the quick... Like, he can score us a try out of nowhere, right? And I hope he's he gets better quicker and just, you know, he gets back into his, his form. But listen, bro... I think as a coach, I think, I just, I don't know, Seraldo's man management, man management in game, like just seeing that in the game, like you got to take him off. Like even, 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 it's the first 10 minutes. I, I don't think we were losing at that point, were we? No, so when he got hurt, it was seven minutes in. Okay. We weren't losing. Whatever it was, we're still not losing, right? So if you take him off and cop a try or two, it's fine. We are, it's, it's okay. It's, it's not the end of the world, but if you're going to keep him on to risk it even more, that's what hurts, bro. Well, you, you see him go down, you're holding his shoulder. Bro, we've watched Arakar for how many years now? We know when he's injured, he's... Like, remember when he did his ankle or whatever? I think it was... Uh, was that the Newcastle game? No, South. The South. In the South game, when he did his ankle, we knew straight away, like, bro, this guy is screwed. Then there's moments where he gets hurt and you're like, nah, he looks He walks right. it off. He walks it off. He'll be okay. Right? But, like, I'm, I'm watching the guy hold his shoulder. Like, even when he caught the ball, he's like... Uh, Lifted his hand up and he just put it in the other hand and he just walked with it. Yeah. Seraldo, what are you doing? Get he rid was of turning it. his back into every hit up because he didn't want to hurt the shot. Yeah, why is he still taking yeah, hit ups? Throw know. the ball. Like, this is what burns me about this team, bro. One sec. This is what kills me about this team, bro. Like, like you see him, get him off. Get him off. Get him off. We have about 14 15 ut utilities. We have 15 bro. utilities, right? I don't know who was on the bench. Kurt Mann? Kurt Mann. He played every position ever. The okay. guy was a winger when this he came what, to the This NRL. is what I do, okay? I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong, but I remember Blake Wilson playing on the left. Phenomenal. Very, very good for us. True? It was all right, but yeah. Well, he, what do you mean? He scored that it was against the Bunnies. Anyway, he, he doesn't anyway, have to. anyway, put him on the left, bro. If that's our stronger side, put Blake Wilson there. No, you leave Blake Wilson there. You move Karaz there and you chuck man into center. Yeah, exactly. Not he, Salmon, who clearly has never played center before. Can't throw a pass. You know and he, we have Curran. Like, Curran can play okay. lock. He can play yeah, second. That's like. the guy that I think... If I don't want to. I don't even want him to move Hutchison. As bad as I think Hutchison is, as bad of a fit I think Hutchison is. But to get him off I, the team. I, Simple. I, I want current starting lock. Yeah, me too. He was our best forward on the on the on the day, bro. And he was running the ball like he he wants to play football, bro. He's playing for the jersey. They all did, and that's the that's why I'm leaving. It. I'm not that mad because all I want is a team that gives it all. And last year they were just down tools too often. That's one bad thing body language from all of the from so many of the players. And this year I didn't see none of it. This game I did not see none of it. No bad body language. You know, the only guy that was showing. The only guy that was showing bad body language was um was Drew because he was gassed, hands on knees, hands on uh, hips. I don't think it know? was bad body language. I but, just think that it's not it's not his role to play. But there, yeah, bro. I think if there's three positions that are in jeopardy on the team, I just look at it. Um, it's that fullback position. I think Blake Taff. There's pressure on him because I do think they want to play uh, Croydon at fullback at some point. Uh, Hudson, uh, I, I Hudson's in trouble, I think, if he doesn't... He's not in trouble. This if he is doesn't why perform, he's... Like, at the end of the day, you as an... Uh, uh, their rugby league staff, as a coach, as a trainer, you should know your players' strengths and weaknesses. M Drew Hutchinson does not fit... Just like, he does not fit in with Matt Burden. Matt Burden needs someone who's a proper seven, has a good... That can put Organizer. a... Organiser. Organiser, proper seven. Flanagan was like that, but Flanagan never did anything. He's not... He's too complacent. He's, he's he's not aggressive. And I think Matt Burden has that same issue. Complacency. Like, lack of aggression. He's just... He's just content with... What they have in front of him. 
Like you got to you got to step up. It's yeah, and enough, I, enough. I, the one thing I do like about Drew Bart is he digs into the line, and it's one thing I want Burner to do more of. And this is the biggest thing that I give Drew. He's more of a six than a seven, and he really digs into the line, and it creates opportunities for everyone else. And this is one thing that we didn't do in attack the last five years. It's really dig into the line. Foreign used to we're do that, it, we're we're but teams, the guy bro. used to get smashed. We don't scare teams anymore. I think, I think, look, yeah, to scare teams, you need to have intimidation. Literal intimidation by having a big pack. We, we don't, don't have, have a big pack. And we don't have that. We don't have that. And that's the biggest issue. <coughs> Paulo and Regan Campbell-Gillard. We've got, we got, we got a Dragons fan just walked in. Grand final tickets, baby! <laughs> grand final tickets, baby! <laughs> hey, Flex, you got any grand final tickets, bro? You want to give some to Tanaka? <laughs> we caught... It's like they forget. They're the match merchants. Anyway, let's listen. Anyway, my last thing is, Seraldo, um, if I see a Hayes Perham situation again... Oh, no, 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 please, please let me talk, please. What? No. Oh, no, you mentioned Hayes Perham. Yeah. Cause what, what happened? Oh, my God, cuz. I swear to God. Because now we have... Uh, a winger spot's not open. A centre spot is. If I see this bloke pull, if I see this bloke pick Hayes Perham at centre, I'm gonna fucking lose my mind. This is a, a public announcement from me, cause I'm gonna I'm gonna be outside Banks like Canterbury headquarters if I see Hayes Perham listed at centre. <laughs> outside he Gus's office. He was a fucking kid. The guy had five tries in four, in sixty minutes, bro. Who against who was it? Hey, Hayes Perham is playing centre on on the on uh, against Parramatta, right? Yeah. This kid. His direct matchup had five tries in the first hour. Yeah, he plays for Para. He doesn't play for. He plays for Para. Hey, he's from. On ha- no, yeah, pay, he plays pay. against us. Yeah, he's playing for <laughs> Parramatta pretty much. Benzema How video. do you let a reserve grader score five tries on your side? I just can't. Like, anyway, he gets picked. Anyway, the center role is up there. There's obviously it's Tracy, Jerry, and it's Jerry, Tracy. It's a lot of different things. I think the thing for for me with Serraldo is I don't want to see a Perham situation. I don't want to see Drew Hutchison rotting there until it's too late to make a change. And we're like, oh. Jack Jacob really like him now full back no, now. I don't want to say that, right? If I say that, I'm done. That's that's one thing. Another thing, and we're going to move on. We're going to transition slightly because if I let you talk about the Bulldogs any longer, you're just going to keep going, right? We have to give credit where credit's due to the March merchants. One thing for me is, when I say Gus Gould, the, the first thing I'll tell him is, why didn't you go and grab Shane Flanagan? Because the Dragons look good, right? And I, I knew this would happen. And yes, calm down. It's round one. Let's not all get excited. Tanaka walked in with his wallet doing this one. We bought grand final tickets and shit. Now, listen, for me, the only the, the mistake Gus made, and I'll probably I hope I get proven wrong one day, right, with Seraldo becoming this superstar coach, but Shane Flanagan's a premiership winning coach, right? Now, any team he goes to, you know there's going to be an instant impact. There's that fee in the other in the players. They're like, oh, that's Shane Flanagan. Now, if you remember, Ammar Suwi Suhaib the third, the Heckenberg's resident, right, said this, get Shane in, get his son, keep his son under his wing, and if it works, it works. It doesn't work. We fucking got nothing to lose, bro. But we let the Dragons snap him up and they snapped up his son. And that's a great addition because they have a man named Ben Hunt in the side of them. And just, they looked absolutely so good, bro. And I've told Dragons fans this last year, especially Asa, be patient with Sloan. Because he is going to, he trust me, he's going he's gonna to lose you some games. There's going to be times where he's going to fumble the bag, one, two, three. But there's going to be times where he's just fucking too hard to stop, bro. Scoring tries after tries, and we have seen that against um against the Titans. Yeah, not like we're getting, we're not letting the Titans slip. By the way, no, they're, on, the, they're I, on our fraud list. I think, I think the Dragons were good, but the Titans were really bad. Poor, like, bro, I I watched Des has like you want to talk about instant impact. He's the guy that makes instant impact. Nothing. <laughs> that was the instant brother. Impact. It was like laziness from the forwards. The laziness in the middle was really embarrassing. Like. They're letting Flanagan... I don't think so as well. I think I think Dragons were on another level, bro, of tempo. Well, no, like, bro. Like, bro. I was seeing Jack Burt. Like, I was seeing... L- Lomax had the game of his life, bro. And and, I, I, and like, like... I know you, I know everyone's going to say he's round one, this, that. But it's a good sign if I'm a Dragons fan. And I hate the Dragons, brother. I hope you suffer. But I have to be real. If I'm a if I'm a Dragons fan, I'm looking at him like... Fah, this looks good, bro. I'm not getting overly excited, but I'm like, this looks good. Yeah, I love Shane. I, and we said the same thing. Like, I would have rather to go for... I would have rather gone for... Because that's what we need, bro. Coach that's what we need. We need an instant done it impact. Before. Yeah, we need, we need someone that's done it before. At least we can say... Yeah, there's a... Like, if we had missed on Seraldo and he ended up being good, I wouldn't have been mad. No, nah, bro. Because we got Seraldo. But now... So now... Because we've got Flanagan, you yeah. know? But now we got Seraldo and we're watching... If, Dragons have a good year this year. Where's the like the finger's gonna be pointed at 
Gus. Uh, Gus and Riley, Riley so, and I love Gus, and I love everything he does. But, but I think it's just like they, they. I think look, signing a young coach was a good idea. That's gonna be growing with a young team, but you sort of want someone that's done it before to grow, help a young team grow. You know what I mean? Because Strado's learning as well as the players. But look, I, I can definitely see some progress from game one. Dragons here, yeah, from f- and yeah, for both of us, like, I think they both we all we both improved in certain areas. But Dragons looked really good defensively. But they looked so good, bro. So the gritty. Titans defensively like letting flanagan waltz through your defense like that little just running through like nobody yeah, touched him that's very like true. this is stuff that we were that's seeing the on bulldog, our team that's the bulldogs <laughs> going through untouched left right, and center and it's not what you expect from a team with such a good forward pack and such a good team on paper you don't expect the titans to be that bad in round one even like, with those injuries they still had a good pack yeah uh, a pretty but decent look, in pack. attack yeah you can tell they definitely miss for feeder feeder is like they spam him left, right, and center, bro. Do you think Brimson should play fullback? I think it was in the centers. Do you think he should be their fullback, bro? I think they should try and um, look. I think I'd rather have Campbell. I think Campbell has way more potential than he didn't Brimson play, does. but yeah, he didn't play. I don't think he did play. Who played? But it was a I, new, I, they had a few injuries, like the title. I was at the Dogs game, so I oh, was. Yeah. It was a bit tough for later. I only watched the mini, but I can't remember off, off, off the top of my head. But with a full team. I think Brimson is a. If they had a trade system, Brimson would be the perfect guy to trade. Like, great player, played well in Origin in the past, but like, you can't fit him in your team anymore. Like, you could go trade him to get an actual specialist center. Right, you know? I, I think. Like, I that's think he why should be your fullback, bro. No, I, I, Campbell was doing so good there last year, bro. And you want to look at the guys like 20, 21 years old, bro. Like, you want a guy that's going to be there for the next 10 years. They're sort of holding on to them, eh? Both of them. They're trying to keep, like, both yeah, of them happy. Yeah, I don't think, I think you should pick one and try and trade. Like, if we had a solid trade system, you try and move Brimson on for someone else. Yeah, that's right. You know what I mean? Like, this would be the perfect situation where you have, you have a, a great fullback, but you have one that could be one of the best fullbacks in the NRL. Like, I don't know if Brimson has that potential, you know what I mean? Yeah, no. Nah, but I, I think already, Campbell I does. So you just trade Brimson for someone that can Establish. give you... Can, like, it's a win-win. Brim, yeah. A team that needs a fullback we need that. We need, the, we need that trade system. Eh? Yeah, that just, it makes so much sense. It's so easy to... It just simplify the whole process. Dragons. They're good on them. Yeah, yeah but much... Eight. I've seen this... <laughs> I've, I've seen this too much, bro. They played too good in the first four <laughs> weeks of the year and then it's like... They're yeah, just, yeah, even the dragons. It's like, handle, they, get, it's like, they, get, it's like they get sick. But they'll agree with you. They, they yeah. do. They do choke. They are the chokers. Like, like they, they, do they choke. start off well, and then they verse the bulldogs in round twenty four, and then the commentator they, they was a savage eight. man. That oh, that was, was so funny. That was bad, bro. On, on Ben Hunt. Yeah. What did he say? No, it was something like, oh, hello, hello Brisbane it's... 2015. Or something. <laughs> yeah, hello. hello 2015. That was funny. <laughs> bro, what a savage, bro. Uh, listen. Anyway, we're moving on. Um, before we get into um, th- we got the uh, RGB Award section. The League Lads Award section. Just the last thing on Spencer Lenu. Any, any, anything because the story's developed a little bit now. We've heard from this, we've heard from that. He's that he, right now? Huh? Is this on right now? Yeah, it would be on right now, now eh? Yeah. 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 I don't know what he's copped. You want to check well, that? Well, no, check they said copy. six to eight weeks. If Montoya got four or five, then he should get more. Yeah, and he didn't want to say sorry. Uh, he said sorry. Ezra Man didn't want to accept it. Yeah. And you have Spencer Lee News brothers going crazy on their Instagram. Oh, that's that's. I'm like, what is going on over here, bro? There's but now they're saying that they're saying that there was something else that triggered it, but I don't know if it was racist or not. Like, yeah, yeah. like Spencer Lee News apparently said that he won't say he won't snitch on the person that made a racial comment on him. Right now, I don't know, cause I don't know. Just, just snap yeah, out but, of it. Yeah, snap but out if, of that, it, guys. if that had happened, the the reaction from the Roosters would have been way more than exactly. Nothing. That's why I think it's cap. So I think it's, it, I, think, I think it's capping, bro. He should have defended. He would have. That would have been the first thing he. If you're innocent, if you're triggered because someone like if someone triggered you to say something bad, you're obviously gonna tell the reason why you said it. Yeah. And uh, we didn't see that happen, so. Just for me, a stupid situation. And it probably bro. would have been on audio footage as well. Ah, oh, definitely, bro. But look, there's like. You know, calling someone a dickhead and then saying something that could potentially be racist too is like... Yeah, it's different. It's different. It's stupid, bro. So, yeah, I don't know. I think it's capping there. Cause Stop if the cap. If something like that, if the roles were reversed, the Roosters fans are going ballistic. Like, look how many bloody raid, like, you know, roid rage people they have on their team, bro. Like, <laughs> you think Radley's going to let you some... Like, let, yeah, let yeah. alone let Spencer. Yeah. You think Jared... Sp- Jared wasn't, he wasn't there, playing, but like, right? like he was like, still voices if, opinion. If somebody had said something like that to Spencer, do you think he wouldn't have lost it? He loses nah. it if someone sneezes, bro. Yeah, it's different. It's different. So I'm just looking here. It's a call for eight weeks. Yeah, yeah. he he 
Rightly so deserves that, bro. I think I think give him another. And then a you for, have to. You have I think to another a for stupidity. Yeah, you <laughs> Not, look like the racial comments one thing, but the stupidity of it kills me. Yeah, you have to. You have to make an example out of him. Unfortunately, like you know, Montoya. What's wrong with this guy? Why is looking at me like what's wrong, guys? <laughs> Smile, bro. Montoya copped that blink. last year. Montoya copped that. How last many year? weeks? Six, four, or five. Yeah, you gotta get now, eight, you gotta give yeah. him eight and then another you gotta eight. You make for an stupidity. example of him, bro. No, you don't want mi- the guy miss the whole year, bro. Like, no, no, no. Eight, eight weeks and we'll learn his lesson, bro. Eight Two weeks months. And then like another four weeks for stupidity. Just for you, like just for being a dumb. You cunt. think four weeks is gonna fix stupid? My uncle always has this. Saying, no, but you like you heard the team. You can't fix stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a bit of WD forty he might fix it. <laughs> and the guy uh, needs WD three thousand, bro. <laughs> just gotta start checking those roosters contracts, man. Just like read them fine prints. Yeah, I think there's a bit of uh, anyway. Let's not get into that, boys. AJB awards. Before we move on to the next round, tips. Who's your player of the round this week? I'll give it to. I'll give it to Tyrell Sloan, bro. Yeah, I'm gonna go Manu, which is still pretty much the same round. Yeah, and and I'll give it to Sloan, bro. Manu yeah. was on, on one in, on that game in Vegas. Good on him, bro. Um, team of the round. Oh, I'm, I'm just going to... I'll give it to him, Melbourne. Nobody expected him to win without Munster. I can't not give it to him. I'll tell and you, I was talking uh, mad smack, so I'll give him their props. Yeah, I was talking mad smack. I can say something different. I was talking mad smack about the Cowboys, bro, and they absolutely shut we me up. We both were. <laughs> um, yeah, I'd, I'd say Cowboys looked like the better team of the round. I don't know if they were, but yeah, I'm going to eat my words there. Fraud team of the round. We all know this. Oh God, the Dolphins, bro. I'm going to go with the Dolphins. Yeah. This is a Wayne... Wayne Bennett team, they came out. I swear to God, they were the. They look like the dogs defensively last year, like really bad. Like every time, every time the Cowboys went down that end, they scored. I swear that like, and then every time they did something good, it would end up in the hammer's hands and it'd screw it. <laughs> yeah, it so I like really that. rated, and they didn't. They didn't play Avrilo. They played Tessie New over. Nah, him. I think he's injured Avrilo. But he played in the reserve grade. Did he? Yeah. Oh, okay. No, I thought he was actually injured because of last end of I, the season. I heard right? something about an injury, but my <laughs> stream was saying he was played in he played in the reserve grade and they picked Tessie New over him. Yeah. So yeah, I'm <laughs> gonna go with the Dolphins. Like nobody really rated them, but I, I'm gonna go Titans, bro. Straight out. I thought like they're gonna come out with a bang. Yeah. Game. I thought that same as Redcliffe. I actually, really? th- yeah, I actually thought that game would have been better, but the Dragons Titans. I thought that would be actually a good game, and you couldn't pick the winner. You know, one to six margin. So yeah. Um, any, do you want to add anything else to these awards? I just made them up on the spot, really. To be honest. Yeah, with you. Penrith could be a fraud team of the week. Like you didn't, literally didn't score. Yeah, like the why first, is Flax copping it, bro? The first time the, f- the defending <laughs> champions didn't score in their first round, yeah. and they lost to a team in England. Can, yeah. can, I, can, I, can I give you some good stats real quick? Oh, right. No, we we lost the World Cup challenge. We lost round one, Why and the, the last final? and the last time we lost to Melbourne to zero, we won the grand final. So, so that's a four peak, four peak. Yeah. Grand final against Dragons versus Panthers. Oh you know? wow! <laughs> when Bulldogs just go fuck themselves in the 17th spot, eh? <laughs> oh. uh, boys, last last thing of the segment, uh, last thing of the show, some tips. Now, uh, don't, d- if, let me tell you this before you actually listen to my tips. Don't listen to me at all. I went last week, zero from eight, right? Zero from eight. Does that make sense in your head? Everything I tipped was wrong. I And, and of course, my delusion is the Bulldogs. I'm always going to tip them. Whether I'm, they're, they're going to win or they're going to lose, I'll always tip them. Straight out. That's just how I am. I, I just can't see it. Especially against Para. I'm going to tip my team. I went two for eight. Yeah. Um, one Woo! of them was Parramatta and the other one was Manly. <laughs> Um, but yeah, two for eight was was a uh, Kaka, um, <laughs> Kaka, but not Ricardo Kaka. Like. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, let's get. But if you way. have more than four out of eight, you're a you don't terrible, know rugby you, You'll yeah. end up last in your tipping comp. Yeah, yeah. If zero for eight, if you had zero to two, you're, you're a good gonna, tipper. You're a good tipper. Let's get into it. I just want uh, score yeah, prediction yeah. and a winner. Right? Brisbane and, and Rabbitohs. Where? Suncorp. Suncorp. Brisbane, Brisbane and Rabbitohs. Yeah, bro. Yeah, okay. Brisbane uh, versus Rabbitohs at Suncorp. I'll go Brisbane 1 to 12. Yeah, I'll go Rabbitohs 1 to 12. Straight up. I feel like it's going to be against the grain. Cronulla Sharks and the Bulldogs. Uh, Cronulla 13 plus. Mm. I'll, go, I'll go Cronulla 1 to 12. Oh, you know what? I'll go Cronulla 13 plus because they always have a number. I was bro. at this game last year, bro. It's 13 yeah. plus. Penrith Para. This is a good game, bro. I'm going to go with. Oh, I don't know what where, what's what's wrong with Moses. Moses will play, bro. Shut up, idiot. Everyone made a biggest scene. Moses was injured. Yeah, guy, I don't know, bro. The guy who played the whole game, if he was injured, they would have been taken off, bro. Yeah. Bro, I don't understand. Yeah. They're like, no, you know, no, if no. Moses played no, properly, they, it would have been 80 nil. Shut up, bro. The guy still played, bro. Yeah, he, my did, face. he did play. He didn't even look that injured, to be fair. But bro, it was kicking. Look, he was kicking on last. Yeah, yeah. Um, look, but they monitor 
groin injuries, bro. Like, monitor anything you want. Give me your score prediction. So, <laughs> I'll go Parramatta one to twelve, what, bro. bro? <laughs> what, bro? Para one to twelve. I hate, I hate the because, bro. I had Johnny. Johnny's like, you know, if Para, if Moses was playing, I'm like, oh, bro, shut up, bro. Get my face, man. So what was it, Para? You know, I will go Penrith one to twelve. I, I think go, they'll I'll, redeem themselves. I go Penrith thirteen plus. Canberra and Tigers. This is a sleeper of a game. Yes. Canberra, yes. One, Canberra 1 to 12. <laughs> yes, well, he's a sleeper. He's a sleeper. Yeah. Can- Canberra, Canberra one to Tigers, 12. give me a score quick. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah, they're playing, they're playing at GI Stadium. Up the milk. Uh, 13, what are you going? I go 1 to 12 Raiders. Yeah, I go 1 to 12 Raiders as well, straight out. Um, Cowboys in Newcastle. That's a tough game, too, bro. In, in North Queensland, mm, yeah, not as not as tough as I. Thought. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go Newcastle to bounce back. Newcastle one to twelve. I'm gonna go Cowboys one to twelve because I want Newcastle to win. And if I tip Cowboys, yeah, you get it. Uh, Melbourne and Warriors. Uh, you know what? The Warriors, Amy Park. The Warriors and us, they're bogey teams. I'm gonna go. I'm actually gonna go the Warriors to win this game. One to twelve. Yeah, I got Warriors to win straight out by fourteen as well. No one to twelve. Yeah. Uh, Manly and Roosters. I'm going. Oh, that's a good game, bro. Yeah, this is good, but they're gonna. Is Warrior Hargraves back? I don't think he is. Nah. Eh? I'm gonna go him. Manly one to twelve. He should be back. Nah, wasn't it three? Just one more game. Wasn't it round two? It was a finals game, round one, round two, and he comes back round three. I think. Oh, well, anyway. So say what say what it would be with and without it. With 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 without. Jared and without Jared. I think. Is there a difference, really? Like, it would be a lot tighter with Jared, but no Spencer, no Jared, and then they got to defend Paseca, and Sipley's back. Oh, no, he's not. Is Sipley back? I don't no, know. We don't got Sipley's anyway. Anyway, bloody Manly 1-12. to Yeah, I'll go Roosters 1-12. to I'll rate um, Manly, man. Oh, you know what, bro? Yeah, anyway. Dolphins and Dragons, last game of the, of the week. I'm going to go Dragons 13+. plus. Dragons 14+. plus. <laughs> see, see the love? <laughs> and the Titans... Um, Got a buy, so yeah. Anyway, that's us. Thank you very much. Love you all. Oh, shit. Stay, stay, Ajibe. Do you have anything to say? Thank you for coming on my stream this weekend. We, we gained 7 million followers. Yeah, there you go. He said it for me. <laughs> that's not what I was going to say. I was like, the Titans rest up because you got the dogs at Belmore round three, mate. Yeah, that's our 13 plus. Love you all.